Beneath the Philippine archipelago lies one of the most dangerous geological features on Earth. The Philippine Sea Plate sits at the intersection of four major tectonic plates, creating ocean trenches so deep they make the Grand Canyon look like a scratch. The deepest point, the Philippine Trench, plunges 34,580 feet below sea level. That's deeper than Mount Everest is tall. But the depth isn't what makes this area deadly. It's what's happening down there, in the crushing darkness, where one massive section of Earth's crust is grinding beneath another at a rate of four inches per year. This is a subduction zone, and it hasn't had a major rupture in over 400 years. Let me explain why that should concern everyone living around the Pacific Ocean. The Philippine Sea Plate is roughly the size of India, sitting in the Western Pacific Ocean. It's bordered by the Eurasian Plate to the west, the Pacific Plate to the east, the Caroline Plate to the south, and several smaller plates to the north. Where these plates meet, something violent happens. Tectonic plates don't just sit next to each other peacefully. They collide, slide past each other, or in the case of subduction zones, one plate dives beneath another. The Philippine Sea Plate is being forced under the Eurasian Plate along the Philippine Trench and the Manila Trench. This creates a massive fault line running along the eastern coast of the Philippines and continuing north toward Japan. When I say the trench is deep, I mean incomprehensibly deep. At 34,480 feet, if you dropped Mount Everest into the Philippine Trench, its peak would still be over a mile underwater. The pressure at that depth is over 1,000 times atmospheric pressure at sea level. A human body would be crushed instantly. Lead would flow like water. Yet life exists down there. Scientists have found organisms adapted to these extreme conditions. Amphipods the size of your hand, translucent fish with bodies designed to withstand crushing pressure, bacteria that thrive in conditions that would kill almost anything else on Earth. The Hadal Zone, as this depth range is called, is one of the least explored environments on the planet. We know more about the surface of Mars than we do about these trenches. But let's talk about why this geological feature is so dangerous. Subduction zones are where the most powerful earthquakes on Earth occur. These aren't your typical earthquakes, they're called megathrust earthquakes, and they can reach magnitudes of 9.0 or higher. Here's how they work. As one tectonic plate slides beneath another, it doesn't move smoothly. The plates lock together due to friction. Pressure builds. Years pass. Decades pass. Sometimes centuries. The stress accumulates like a coiled spring being compressed tighter and tighter. Then suddenly, the plates slip. All that stored energy releases in seconds. The result is catastrophic. The 2011 Tohoku earthquake in Japan, magnitude 9.1, came from a subduction zone just north of the Philippine Sea Plate. That single earthquake shifted Japan eight feet to the east, tilted Earth's axis by four inches, and triggered a tsunami that killed nearly 20,000 people and caused the Fukushima nuclear disaster. The 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake, magnitude 9.1 to 9.3, also came from a subduction zone. The resulting tsunami killed over 230,000 people across 14 countries. These are the kinds of events subduction zones produce. The Philippine Trench System is capable of the same thing, and the geological record shows it's happened before. In 1918, a magnitude 8.3 earthquake struck the Moro Gulf in the southern Philippines. The earthquake itself was devastating, but the tsunami that followed was worse. Waves up to 30 feet high crashed into coastal communities. Over 4,000 people died. Entire villages disappeared. That was a century ago. The fault has been quiet since then, too quiet. Geologists study something called the seismic gap theory. When a fault hasn't ruptured in a long time, it doesn't mean the danger has passed. It means pressure is building. The longer the gap since the last major earthquake, the more energy has accumulated, and the more devastating the eventual release will be. The Philippine Trench hasn't had a megathrust earthquake in over 400 years. Geological surveys show strain accumulating along the fault line. GPS measurements reveal the plates are locked together, not sliding smoothly. The spring is being compressed. It will eventually release. We just don't know when. Scientists monitor the area constantly. Seismographs track every minor tremor. GPS stations measure ground movement down to millimeters. Ocean buoys detect unusual water movements. But earthquake prediction is still more art than science. 
We can identify where earthquakes will happen and roughly how powerful they'll be. We just can't predict when. What we do know is that when the Philippine Trench finally ruptures, the consequences will be severe. The Philippines has a population of over 110 million people, many living in coastal areas directly in the path of any resulting tsunami. Manila, the capital, sits on reclaimed land near the Manila Trench, another subduction zone in the region. A major earthquake there could trigger liquefaction, where solid ground turns to liquid, collapsing buildings and infrastructure. Japan, Taiwan, and other nearby countries would also be at risk. A large enough tsunami could cross the Pacific, affecting coastlines thousands of miles away. The 2011 Japan tsunami caused damage as far away as California and Chile. The geological structure itself is fascinating in a terrifying way. As the Philippine Sea Plate subducts beneath the Eurasian Plate, it doesn't just disappear. It descends into the mantle, heating up as it goes deeper. Water trapped in the rock boils off, lowering the melting point of the surrounding mantle. This creates magma, which rises to form volcanoes. This is why the Philippines has so many active volcanoes. Mount Pinatubo, Mount Mayon, Tile Volcano. These are all products of the subduction process. The Pacific Ring of Fire, the horseshoe of volcanic and seismic activity surrounding the Pacific Ocean, exists because of subduction zones like this one. The connection between earthquakes and volcanoes in subduction zones creates a cascading risk. A major earthquake can trigger volcanic eruptions. In 1991, Mount Pinatubo erupted after a magnitude 7.8 earthquake struck nearby. The eruption was one of the largest of the 20th century. Ejecting so much material into the atmosphere, it temporarily cooled global temperatures. Now, imagine a magnitude 9 earthquake along the Philippine Trench, triggering multiple volcanic eruptions simultaneously while also generating a Pacific-wide tsunami. It's not science fiction, it's geology. The deep ocean trenches themselves are still largely unexplored. In 2021, explorer Victor Vescovo descended to the bottom of the Emden Deep, part of the Philippine Trench, in a specially designed submersible. Even at those crushing depths, he found plastic waste. We've managed to pollute even the most remote, extreme environments on Earth, but he also found life, creatures that have evolved in complete darkness, under pressure that would flatten a submarine, in near freezing temperatures. These organisms tell us something important. Life adapts, Earth endures, but human civilizations are fragile. The coastal cities built on the shores around the Philippine Sea Plate aren't adapted to withstand megathrust earthquakes and tsunamis. Building codes are improving, early warning systems are being installed, but preparation is expensive and politically difficult. It's hard to convince people to spend money preparing for a disaster that might not happen in their lifetime. But geology doesn't care about political cycles or budgets. The plates keep moving, the pressure keeps building. The question isn't if the Philippine Trench will rupture, it's when. Some scientists argue we're in a heightened period of seismic activity globally. The last two decades have seen major earthquakes in Sumatra, Haiti, Chile, Japan, Nepal, and elsewhere. Whether this represents a genuine increase or just better detection and reporting is debated. But subduction zones like the Philippine Trench are always dangerous, regardless of global trends. What can be done? Early warning systems can provide minutes of notice before a tsunami strikes. That's enough time to evacuate coastal areas and move to higher ground. Japan's system worked in 2011, giving people time to escape. Building codes requiring earthquake-resistant construction save lives. Education programs teaching people to recognize natural tsunami warnings, like rapid ocean recession before the wave hits, can make the difference between survival and disaster. But ultimately, living near a subduction zone means accepting a certain level of risk. Millions of people do it because they have no choice. It's where they were born, where their families live, where their livelihoods are. The ocean provides food and transportation, the volcanic soil is fertile for agriculture. The risks come with the benefits. The Philippine Sea Plate will continue its slow, inexorable dive beneath the Eurasian Plate. Four inches per year doesn't sound like much, but over geological time, it's dramatic. 
Millions of years from now, the entire Philippine sea plate will have been consumed, recycled back into Earth's mantle. New crust will form. The cycle continues. We're just living in one moment of that vast process. But for the people whose lives will be affected by the next major rupture, that moment is everything. The deep trenches of the Philippine Sea aren't just geographic features. They're active, dangerous, and capable of reshaping the Pacific region in ours. The creatures living in those depths have adapted to survive in one of Earth's harshest environments. Humans haven't. We build cities on fault lines, live on coastlines, and hope the Earth stays still beneath our feet. It won't. It never does. The only question is when the next slip occurs, and whether we'll be ready when it does. The Philippine Trench is overdue. The pressure is building. And somewhere in the darkness, 34,580 feet below the surface, the Earth is preparing to move.